Hey, my name is Itai and thank you for joining for another quick video about getting started with it. In this video, I'd like to dive in to a topic that probably a lot of you are wondering about. What are environments or ends as we refer to in our documentation? Environments in Bit, in a nutshell, allows you to control your development workflow for a particular type of component. Environments are in fact components, but we'll touch this a little bit later as well. So in this workspace, we have two React components and one environment. Uh, so we can quickly run BitList to see exactly what we have here in our workspace. Right, so you see here, those are our components. And if you remember, whenever we created a component, there was a small output line saying which environment or what is the configuration for this component. We can revisit that by running the command bit end. And that reports back to us the specific configuration for each component. And then we can even observe a little bit how exactly this thing Great. So here in the output, we see that our environment component is of type environment. And we have my first component and my second component that both are using an environment that was created here locally in this demo workspace called my React environment. This means that all the configuration, whether this is compilation with TypeScript, testing with Jest, uh, dev server with Webpack, my pretty rules, my LinkedIn rules, my build pipeline for a component is defined in that particular environment. So what is this environment and how it's created? So as we see, an environment is a component, meaning that all the benefits that we have on managing components, we have on managing our environments. So in our organizations, for example, we can create multiple environments that facilitate multiple workflows for our development, right? Maybe we want to have specific setup for our React development. We want to have specific setup for Angular development. Maybe we want to have different specific flavors per project so we can share those things as bit components and start managing them. And because each bit component is independently versioned, this means that we can iterate and slowly improve our environments. And for every component in our organization or team that uses this environment, it's just going to be a very small dependency upgrade for their environment in order to adapt for the latest and greatest tools and workflows they use. So I want to quickly go over the building blocks of a bit environment. As you see here, in this case, I'm not using an environment as a dependency, which in a future video I'll show exactly how you do that. But I have my environment locally here, meaning that whatever I do to modify my environment will impact my components here locally. The environment starts from the .bit and file. Essentially, this file is a composition that brings in multiple plugins for multiple tools used by Bit. And any other plugins that you want, there's open source plugins built for Bit. Uh, if you want to use Cypress or if you want to use Fit or anything else, you can kind of compose your own workflow through these environments. I can set up the name for my environment. And then through those small plugins, I can control the different environment tools for different workflows. So for example, the compiler option just uses the TypeScript compiler plugin, passes ATS config and different types to resolve. And as you see here, it's just a very basic TS config that in this case, by the way, extends the default configuration from Bit. So we can quickly jump to definition to see what's inside. You see that's we target ESM in this case. Now you can keep extending from the configuration from the default plugin or you can override with your own you know, compiler options and pass your own options to the apps of compiler. Uh, you can basically just remove the extents and start your fresh with building your TS config configuration. And the same approach happens on every tool in Bit. For Linter, the same thing exactly, right? We use the ESLink plugin and we pass the TS config and ES link RC. Again, starting from defaults, but you can override, you can set your own formatter, preview, and most importantly, the build pipeline. So in Bit, uh, environment, make sure to run a specific build pipeline per component. 
And regardless of the normal tools you can run for the different lifecycle commands, like bit compile, bit test, and so on, as bit versions your component, it will run a specific build pipeline, which you can control programmatically. You can create tasks, you can remove tasks, you can modify different tasks and add more capabilities or even remove capabilities from your build pipelines, all done programmatically. And everything is set on a per component basis, because as I mentioned earlier, in the same workspace, I get to have components of different systems, right? So the environment configuration is different than my React configuration. I can even control my weapon configuration and few other features that I quickly overlooked. But as you see here, the preview capabilities, essentially whenever you run in the big start UI and you see different components rendered, you actually have full control on how you want to mount all of your compositions. So for example, if you have a specific theme that you want to apply on all of your components, or if you have anything specific that you want to be mounted in the BTUI when running with start and observing compositions, you do it through the environment here. This means that for different types of components, you can mount different items. Uh, so you can create a specific development experience for different components.